Welcome to Season Chasers. I'm Rob Freeman. Those that love nature and outdoor sports spend a lot of quality time looking for adventure throughout the year. The more you study, the more you learn about the peak seasons in nature. It's fun to know when it's best to go fishing or hunting, when it's time to pick blueberries, wild mushrooms, or native pecans. Sometimes the peak season is close to home, right in your own backyard, or it could be miles away near the mountains and the sea. Either way, this program will chase the seasons where the action is hot. The season is almost winter time. It's the middle of December, and it's just about a perfect day for a field hunt with a good pointing dog out at Pawnee. Plus today, an update on the Kansas white-tailed deer season. Come along as we study, learn, and share the great outdoors. I call it Season Chasers. We got Charlie from Oklahoma with us today. And you guys probably don't recognize him because he doesn't have that uh, flower pot straw hat on like he does when he's fishing. But. Uh, <laughs> And uh, also not from around here, all the way from Reno, Nevada, and other parts is John. And uh, we've got Dennis here and his dog Bud. Uh, they're going to run today and see if we can't find something in the field and uh, see if we can get these guys some uh, exciting wing shooting action out here on the Kansas Prairie. So uh, it's almost time to release the hounds. What do you say, Dennis? Let's go. Like a hound. Well, at least you pronounce Nevada correctly, too. We appreciate that. <laughs> now, now that uh, mispronunciation occurs over in Missouri. Yeah, Missouri. <laughs> okay, load them up. Load them up. Probably a pack rat. That's a rat hotel there. You guys got pack rats out here? Yep. Did you bring your rat tag? Yeah. <laughs> I have a rat tag. He's down. Where do you want John, Dennis? We got lucky this time, no ice storm. After what, 17 years? I think that's how long I've been coming. Got uh, about as nice as you could hope for this time. Whoa! Whoa! But I did blow. All right, John, you didn't pick up that box of blanks now, did you? My bird. Yeah, I uh, come out and really like to have John take the first shot on most of this stuff, and, and I'm a secondary backup shot, but the way the birds flew, uh, it was my opportunity to take the first shot, and did pretty good on the first two or three, and then uh, loaded, uh, unloaded my gun a couple of times, 
and we had to go chase them. So I uh, kind of hurt my pride there the last couple of times, but we did pretty good. And uh, we stirred up some uh, chuckers and stirred up some some pheasant and had a had a had a good day. Really, really enjoyed uh, Dennis and his dog. Bud was a good little work dog. Dennis said he was a little four-year-old and he's uh, working him for field trial work. So it it uh, it worked out real well. Well, that's how it's done. Make sure you reload. That worked out, didn't it? Out here, if you shoot it, you get to carry it. What kind of gun did you shoot that one with? 16 gauge Browning automatic, semi automatic. It has a little about 70 years old. It has a little picture of Mr. That's Browning on the side. Well, it just goes to show there's still some good shots in that gun. That one didn't fly real high, and I don't know if we could see it so well against the trees, but uh, I sure saw it fall with gusto. I think Bud's having a good old time. He's down. Saw it here, folks. No, A clean miss on that one. Good boy, Bob. That one got it from both sides. Go 
John. Right, I wanted to hold off till I got hip past you guys. That one was moving. John got that one. I that missed one was it. Moving. I was leading it. I missed it. Hip. Come on, bud. Come on. Yeah, that was out there a ways. Now that was the shot of the water. Come on. You got it, John. Here. 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 Come on. Bet. Hunt dead. Hunt dead. Hunt dead. Hunt out there. What? Out there. Catch here. Here. Come on. Here. Here. Come on. Come on. My bird. Come on. Show this to my buddies in Reno. Maybe we can get them to come out here next time. Yeah. This is it. Is what it is. This is what we do. The nice thing well, about the other thing is having a you know a guy like Dennis that's got a you know a really good dog and loves what he's doing. You know, I mean, just. Uh, can't duplicate this. Yeah, Bud makes it a little easier, doesn't he? Pick the tail up, dog. Oh. Come on up a little more, John. Yeah, come on up around. Give you a better shot. Charlie, that bird's right there. I want it to go to John. Whoa! But it's facing me. You want to wait? It's probably going to go that way. Yeah, okay. You want to get on the other side of it to kick it? No, because then I'd be kicking it to him and he might catch it. Okay. <laughs> there you go, John. Cool. Beautiful. Come on. He wants to give it to you. Thank you. Good boy. Good boy. <coughs> now he thinks he knows who shoots him. Yeah, there we go. Tell me when you're ready, Rob. Try to get it to go towards John. Okay. It's right at my floor. Here. Come on. Come on. My bird. My bird. Come on. My bird. Yeah, but the dog is, uh, I think he's one of the best. Upland bird dogs I've ever seen. Your guy uh, Dennis is one heck of a trainer. Yeah, that one's not moving. Good job. All right, thanks. Good boy, bud. Good boy, bud. Whoa. Nope. 
bird, bud. No bird. Sometimes three shots is no just bird. not enough. We'll reload, regroup, and see if Bud can track this one down for us. Actually, we didn't. We missed a couple, but uh, yeah. none of them got away. Yeah. Ultimately, we managed to chase them all down. Good finally. Dog. Oh, he's coming over here. Yeah, was at, it was at the yeah. Well, I've got an old Browning Satori over under that got used 20 years ago and still works really good. So uh, between the two of you, you and you and Chuck pretty well uh, had them covered, and there was no escapees on this trip. Yeah, no escapees for once. Got a clean sweep. Well, this is something I look forward to every year is coming back out to Kansas and seeing old friends. So thanks again, Rob. We'll see you next time. No, no, we uh, we were able to get all the ones that uh, we needed to get. And as uh, John alluded to earlier, the uh, the birds are going to go to Kansas City here from Fort Scott, and uh, they're going to they're going to participate in a big grand party and uh, they're going to be the guest attraction. So I don't know exactly how John's going to cook them up, but uh, I think he's got a secret recipe that he tried last year and uh, was a big hit at the party. So we're going to have uh, we're going to have checker quail and pheasant for supper. When you start out with good stuff like this, it disappears quickly at a holiday party. Don't be shy. We're just about down to the last one. An update on the Kansas whitetail deer season, coming up next on Season Chasers, HDTV. Hi, I'm Sean with BNR Electric. Give us a call for all your electric needs. We do new additions, remodels, panel upgrades, any kind of wiring that you can desire, we can do it. Owner is always on site. Call us, 620-232-9473, BNR Electric, LLC. 620-232-9473. Quality and service you can depend on. I guarantee it. Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has nature's best fall decoration. Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has what you need to feed and care for the wild birds. Blue Ribbon Farm and Home sells supplies to attract trophy white-tailed deer. And don't forget Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has a huge selection of food for dogs. Whether you have a lap dog, a sport dog, chickens, or a goofy goat, Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has all the feeds you'll ever need. You talk about a goofy goat, and this is the goofy goat right here. Extreme environments can cause a spontaneous change in DNA resulting in unexpected power and agility. Introducing the all-new, all-powerful Gator RSX 850i. 62 horsepower, a fully independent multi-link suspension, and a top speed of 53 miles per hour. It's a whole new species of Gator. Come on out to Pawnee Wildlife Preserve where it's pheasant season now through the end of March. And some people don't think of eastern Kansas as a place for wild pheasants, but I guarantee there's no slow flying ones out here. We've got ringneck pheasants and uh, there's no daily limit. We're open daily with an extended season and no daily limits for pheasants, chucker, and quail. Pawnee is a great place for dog training, private field hunts, or group events. So give us a call at the number on your screen and come on out for a nice day in the country at Pawnee Wildlife Preserve, Fort Scott, Kansas. Ready to go?
<laughs> now I don't know about the rest of you, but out here it's been kind of a tough deer season. Hunting is all about studying and learning. Today we'll share some lessons that we learned during the deer season. Here's some incredible phone video taken by Preston from Michigan, who's hunting out here in early November. He's up in a tree along a creek bank, and this fellow stops by. Preston was doing just about everything right to get this buck this close, and I think he showed incredible patience waiting for the perfect shot. Now we've looked at this several times, and even at the 15 yard distance, this buck reacted to the sound of the string, and the arrow lands high on the shoulder. Yeah, it rolls him over, but the arrow doesn't pass straight through. Now I'm amazed that this buck was able to move at all, but he's still in range for a second shot this time from the other side. All right, this is the part of the hunt that uh, everybody always looks forward to. <laughs> yes, indeed. Now, we've seen your video proof of hitting this deer twice already, and now it uh, comes down to the point of going and picking it up and seeing how big it is. Oh, we found plenty enough blood, definitely for sure, that we feel positive about it. So, so, so we've given it some time, so the next step is? Finding the body. That's the key. All right. The meat, the important part. All right, well, you guys get to go with us. Preston finds his deer. Look here. I tag along as Preston and Troy pick up the blood trail. It's a leapfrog process as we mark one spot and advance on to the next one. The trail leads to a really brushy area where there's big cedar trees that go all the way to the ground. And that's where our clues ran out. Preston combed the area for three more days with no sign of that buck. I helped look during two of the days after seeing the video. That's a hard lesson for all of us. Well, we're here for another day of the Kansas firearm deer season. And um, this is one of those days where I'm glad I'm not hunting from a tree stand. Uh, we're out here in the uh, Creekside temporary office where it's kind of nice and dry on a rainy day. Now back during the archery season, I saw some movement during a rainstorm or two. So uh, we're going to sit tight here and hope something comes by and gives themselves an opportunity to go home with us. Some of the mornings were 22 degrees. 
at sunrise, and uh, today was quite a bit different, right about 50. So uh, we're going to take advantage of the, the rain and the warmer temperatures. And hope it turns into some white-tailed deer action for you today on Season Chasers. Thanks for coming along. This one walked up the creek one day, and I knew that the clearing was just about 50 yards away. And that's just the outside range for my crossbow. That was a clean miss. I know for sure from looking at the clean bolt that I found and the way that this one easily hopped the fence to get away. I usually learn the biggest lessons from my mistakes. It looked to me like a good shot the buck reacted to the sound of the string and the just about half second it took for the broadhead to reach him. My conclusion is that a 50 yard crossbow shot on a deer is possible, but it's much more likely to be effective if you do it from a distance of 25 yards or less. After several replays, it looks like my shot was low and right of where I wanted it to be. Well, Now that the Kansas firearm season is closed for the year, I have a few more days in the woods with my crossbow, and I hope to fill a buck tag before it's all over. The way this deer hunting's turning out this year has sure made my pet goat, Kiddo, just a little bit nervous around the farmhouse. Yep, well, you know, that, that goat can't keep its uh, nose out of that corn bag over there. So we, I tell you what, if any, any time you want me to uh, fire up a barbecue, we, right we can have barbecue goat any time. I'd, I'd be the first person to uh, be in line with uh, the barbecue sauce and the, and the dill pickles for the goat. Waka waka. Tune in each week for some of the stuff you just won't see on other shows. Outdoors, wildlife, and a life of adventure. Being on the lookout for natural foods and making the most of what the wildlife provides. Study, learn, and share the great outdoors with someone who's important to you.